Good afternoon to you, Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Sunday, September 25th, 2016. The tropics becoming much more newsworthy as we have progressed through the weekend and certainly will increasingly do that as we get into next week. This is the area that we're going to be watching closely, Invest Area 97L, generally headed towards the Windward Islands here. We've been talking about this for several days the GFS model in particular has been advertising that this would develop uh, even back when it was a tropical wave uh, over Nigeria in Africa many days ago. So it's done remarkably well, and now you see it starting to blossom here. This is a uh, unenhanced infrared satellite picture, so basically a black and white infrared satellite shot. The brighter the colors of the clouds, typically the higher they are in the atmosphere. And just for reference, this is the leftovers of Lisa. Carl is way off the satellite shot up here to the north. And then here's our system down here, a very large envelope of energy, a very broad area of turning, some shower and thunderstorm activity associated with it. There's a little bit of dry air coming out with this system, mainly to its north and west. But overall conditions are generally favorable for this to gradually get better organized. Again, with it being such a large area of energy here. It's going to take a little bit of time, but that will also help protect it from any adverse conditions in the atmosphere. And overall, it looks like this will be heading generally towards the Windward Islands. Exactly where? It's hard to say. So what I want to do, I know there's a lot of interest, obviously and understandingly so, about where this will end up in the short, the medium, and the long range. And so for now, let's just look at the next five days. This is this morning's run of the GFS, the Global Forecast System, from the 12Z run, 12 UTC, Universal Time Coordinate, same thing as 12Z. When is that? Well, that's basically that uh, this model was initialized at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. So what are we looking at here? Well, here is the east coast of the United States. There's Florida, etc., north coast of South America, and the Lesser Antilles. This is the system right here that we're going to be watching, and this is valid tomorrow morning, Monday morning at 12 UTC, which is roughly 8 o'clock Eastern Time. The other features we're looking at, large area of high pressure out over the Atlantic here, trough of low pressure that captured Carl moving away out into the Atlantic, uh, more energy diving south and east out of Canada, and then a little bit of a ridge here between all of that. So you have these waves of low pressure and high pressure in the atmosphere. And then down in the tropics, there is our system. It's barely noticeable here at the 500 millibar level tomorrow morning because it's still fairly shallow in the atmosphere. Its vorticity, the spin and the energy, hasn't reached higher in the atmosphere yet for it to become sort of detectable, if you will, in the model. If we move out to 48 hours, it starts to do a little bit better job of that. Here we go, there it is, starting to get its act together a little bit more. And then you notice too, we have this ridge trying to build in over here, this uh, subtropical ridge as we call it, of high pressure uh, over the Atlantic, driving this system generally to the west fairly steadily. But then we have this huge area of energy coming down towards the Great Lakes out of Canada, and this is gonna be a major factor and the overall progress of this system after its interaction with the Windward Islands. Moving out into time, 72 hours, this is valid on Wednesday morning, and now the system is showing up a little bit better at the 500 millibar level, and there's the Windward Islands down there, uh, Barbados over here, Trinidad and Tobago off to the south and west of the system. So if the GFS is absolutely correct, and this is three days out, this would pass to the north and the east of Trinidad and Tobago, but potentially right over Barbados and uh, the southern Windward Islands as a whole. So certainly interest there, need to watch this closely. Now other models, such as the European, the UK Met, uh, drive this closer to the north coast of South America. So we need to consider that certainly. Uh, Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao, uh, the northern coast of Venezuela needs to be watching this closely as well. But I have to say, overall, the GFS has been the most consistent with this system out to about seven days or so. Uh, and you see also this ridge of high pressure here 
keeping this system forced down into this westward track, uh, not relenting very much. Then you have this energy here trying to hammer away on it. A very complex evolution coming up for sure. Then as we move on out, this is Thursday morning, 96 hours, and there's the system reflecting fairly well at the 500 millibar level, uh, just north of the coast of South America, scraping not too far to the north of the ABC Islands down there in the Southern Caribbean. And then you have this energy here coming in, cut off low pressure area and associated upper level trough. The ridge starts to get beaten back a little bit. So I would expect that this will start to slow down if this evolves as this shows. And from there, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Certainly by day five, now the model shows very solid reflectivity here in the 500 millibar pattern, a lot of energy reaching upward through the atmosphere, and it shows me that this is an intensifying system. Now, this is the ABC Islands through here, so just north of there, hopefully staying away from the landmass down here. This is a region that's not necessarily used to tropical cyclones, so uh, any distance away from South America would certainly be good for those folks. And then from here on out, it's all going to come down get rid of that notification to what happens does this ridge of high pressure here this very large dome of air if you will hold strong enough sort of buffering against this upper level piece of energy uh, to keep this moving generally west northwest towards this benchmark area of 80 degrees longitude by about 20 degrees latitude this is the area that if it gets into we really start to have to worry about US impacts it's so hard to say. When you have a feature like this, this upper level low uh, over North America, it becomes very complicated. You remember, and this is so weird, almost exactly a year ago, an upper level low was forecast to dig into the southeast here and possibly capture Joaquin out of the Bahamas and pinwheel it up into the mid-Atlantic states. We're almost in the exact same position that we were a year ago. Isn't that crazy? Not a you know complete uh, carbon copy of what we had because Joaquin formed up here, moved to the southwest, got stuck here for a little bit, and then it looked like it could pinwheel around that upper low into the mid-Atlantic. Instead, the ridge was er eroded enough, and Joaquin went on out to sea, brushing past Bermuda. This is already buried down in the uh, southern Caribbean, and we'll see you know the some of the models do take this up past Florida and out to sea uh, others are much slower down in this region uh, Jamaica you know the Dominican Republic Southeast Cuba we all have to watch this very closely this is not a cut and dry situation and speculating beyond the time day the time day the five day time frame is uh, you know completely ridiculous right now so there's no reason to even worry about it beyond this time, especially because folks down here, uh, especially in the southern windwards, really need to be watching this the closest. Now, I know there's questions, you know, hey, I've got a vacation planned in Cancun, or I'm going to the Caymans, do I need to worry about this? Well, as long as you get all those vacations and whatever wrapped up before October 1st, no, I don't think you have to worry about it too much. This is the Cayman Islands, and this is the Yucatan here, and you can see our system as well to the southeast. So, you know, even Jamaica here by the 1st of October looks okay. Beyond that time frame, it's anybody's guess. And we had to watch these different features as they evolve uh, because it's going to be very complex, let me tell you. All right, well, that's all I've got for today. Really, again, not much more to add until this really develops and we get a center fix on it and recon starts flying out there. And you know, eventually the Gulfstream 4 jet will be dropping the drop sons to sample the atmosphere, to provide more data points for the models to ingest, and help them resolve the upper atmosphere better. And all of that will be taking place over that time uh, of the next five days, and that will help us to figure things out. All right, have a great rest of your Sunday afternoon as usual. Thank you for tuning in. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll have more for you tomorrow.